Dude, some of you guys are kind of crazy, dude. Already studying for Olympiads in summer? Like, what the heck? That's crazy. Just kidding, okay? It's great that you guys are starting on Olympiads. The best time to start is in summer because once the school year starts, things can get busy. So, it's good that you guys are starting now. Because so many of you guys have been asking me for tips on how to start studying for these Olympiads, it is time to make one comprehensive guide of all the resources you need to study. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today I wanted to talk about all the five Olympiads that I've done, and specifically the resources that you need to get started. Now, the resources that people use differ a ton. Like, I use some set of resources, but then like, you guys in the Discord have used a completely different set of resources, so I'm gonna try to give you guys as big a picture as I can. First off, like, what worked for me, and then also what you guys have been talking about in my Discord. If you guys want to talk to other people who've been studying for these Olympiads, join the Discord. There's so many of you guys talking about it, it's crazy. It's really good because like a bunch of you guys are teaching me stuff that I had no idea about before. So let's get started, shall we? Let us start with math, okay? Amy, Sodmo, and Yusamo. So it's pretty common knowledge that AOPS is basically like the best set of textbooks and problems and everything there is out there. So if you can afford AOPS, that's like your best way to spend your money. Basically the way I learned math is I got a little bit lucky, right? Because my high school basically had a program where the high school students teach the middle school students math. But I also basically took like a ton of AOPS courses. So in like seventh grade, I started taking like intro to algebra, intro to accounting and probability, intro to number theory, all that stuff. And then I started doing Alchemist. And Alchemist is completely free, okay? So if you're just getting started in math and you need like a way to get into it, Alchemist is a great way because they have all these free problems, right? And then they have the solution to those problems if you get it wrong. So basically, if you want good practice problems when you're getting started, just search up AOPS Alchemist, Art of Problem Solving Alchemist, and you'll find a ton of good problems. The courses themselves are really good too because they make you pace yourself, they give you a ton of good problems, and they have like the live instruction too, so that's cool. But yes, I do understand that AOPS is not affordable for everybody. So the free resources are, once again, Alchemist. There's a bunch of free problems on the AOPS wiki, right? You could get access to like past Amy problems, past AMCs. Basically what I did, is after taking the AOPS classes, the intro AOPS classes in 7th grade, I basically did a ton of practice AMC 8s and AMC 10s from the website. And then when I got a little bit better, like in 8th grade, I was able to qualify for Amy, I started moving on to the more intermediate classes, right? And those are a lot better for Amy level problems. And then after that, I still needed more practice, so I basically bought like the some of the intermediate AOPS books, and I basically just looked through the topics, and I focused on the ones that were hard for me, right? Dude, like one thing that was super hard for me for some reason was pi, principle of inclusion and exclusion. I don't know why. It's literally such a simple concept, but like I basically grinded out a ton of problems in the AOPS textbook and that helped me a ton. Like basically in 8th grade, I sucked at counting and probability, but then by the time I was through 8th grade summer, I, I had like done the intermediate counting and probability book. I had like taken awesome math probability. It was great. I was finally somewhat decent at counting and probability. In terms of other resources, like there's barely any like dedicated competition math books. Of course there's like those Olympiad focused ones which are like EGMO, but those are like way more advanced than like AOPS textbooks. There's not that much for introductory like competitive math. So if you're just getting started, your best bet is to start with Alchemist. And one thing that I think would be a good idea, I don't know if this actually works in practice, but you could basically look at the table of contents for AOPS textbooks and then using that you could search up the different concepts and Wolfram Alpha has like plenty of wikis on this kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, that's basically all I have for math. It's basically just doing AOPS classes and then doing a ton of problems. Like, that's what it boils down to. And then when you're more advanced, you could try more advanced books like EGMO. There's a ton of, like, Olympiad books out there. So once you get that advanced, then you could move on to other stuff. And now let's move on to Yusuko because Yusuko is great. So in terms of resources, basically all I did was I first took, like, Princeton and Stanford courses for algorithms on Coursera, right? And these ones are super, super useful because they first off teach you all the algorithms you need like through goals, basically. And they give you a ton of programming assignments, okay? Like personally, I think that the only way to get better at coding is by doing code. This is like a pretty obvious thing. Like there's no way to get better at coding just by reading a book or something. So by taking a course, you're improving your coding skills like a lot more than if you're done reading a book and trying to internalize it that way. And then in addition to those courses, I think the main thing that helped me was just doing past Yusuko problems. Like, basically what I would do is I would try it for like two hours, and if I can't solve it in two hours, I would look at the solution. And then I would look at what concept I was missing, like let's say it was binary search, I would search it up on Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks literally has like solutions to any single problem you could possibly think of, and every single algorithm is on Geeks for Geeks. So, if you guys are stuck on anything, look at Geeks for Geeks, it's great. And then I also took an A-star course. That actually helped me a lot because I, it, they just force you to do problems, right? Like, it's hard to get the discipline to do problems, but if you do, like, an A-star course or something, it really helps you out. Another thing I would recommend is make your own curriculum, right? Like, you don't need A-star to tell you to do problems, right? You can just say, I'm going to do three problems this week. Hooray. Finish the problems. Then three problems next week. Finish the problems. 
and then you basically are guaranteed that you're going to be improving steadily. Okay, other resources, of course, is HackRank, which I use like regularly just to practice coding. It's not that complex. They don't have like super high level problems. So if you're going for algorithm testing, don't use HackRank. But if you're just wanting to like brush up on your coding, like if you're in bronze or silver, then I think HackerRank is a really good place to do it. Of course, there's lead code, but honestly, in my opinion, HackerRank looks so much better. The UI is great, okay? So I personally prefer HackerRank over lead code, that kind of stuff. If you want to switch over to C++, which I would highly recommend, okay, Java sucks for competitive programming. Why the heck would you want to write new buffered writer, new scanner, new whatever, instead of just writing CN or like FN or like C out. It's so much cleaner in C++. If you want to switch over to C++, I would recommend looking at the new Boston, his channel. He has like a crash course on C++. Even though it's not that official, it's free first of all. And it's literally so fast. It, he gives you like all the for loops, your arrays, your vectors, all in like one place and you're good. I mean, I would recommend my own videos, but come on, you guys already watched them, right, right, right? You better have watched them, okay? I'm going to come to your house. Okay, I probably should not say that. Well, you better watch them, okay? And then a bunch of you guys have asked me about code forces. I think CodeForces is great. If you're like super interested in CS, I think CodeForces is a really good way to practice your algorithm skills and problem solving skills and all that good stuff. But if your focus is Usico, I think CodeForces is not a good way to practice because the problems are completely different. Like the contests stress a whole nother level of competitive programming. They're more like speed rather than like, I don't know, like algorithms, I don't know. It's just more speed focused, right? I don't know, the problem format is just really different in CodeForces. So if you want to study for Usico, like, the best way to do that is just to use past Usico problems. I can bet that you're not going to run out of Usico problems anytime soon. But if you do run out of problems, CodeForces is a great option because they have literally the problems, like, ordered by, like, topic. You could search for tags. They have a lot of stuff. And then a couple of you guys have been recommending Darren Yao's competitive programming book. I can't speak to how good it is, so if you guys want to try that out, feel free. Sounds good. Okay, Yusufo, let's get into it. So essentially for studying physics, there's two phases, right? You first had to learn the concepts and then you had to apply the concepts. Now, I don't think it's that easy to merge the two because like to apply it, you first gotta have the concepts and I would not recommend wasting practice problems before you actually get the concepts down. So what I would recommend doing first is learn physics properly, okay? Don't just like skim the textbook and be like, oh, yay, I'm ready to try out my ESMA skill, get like a four and then be like, oh, let's read the textbook again. Okay, let's try again. Oh, I got a five and then slowly build it up. No, you're wasting a ton of perfectly good ESMA problems. What I would recommend is reading through a textbook, then doing the problem in the textbook. Those are not ESMA problems. And then do that for all the chapters. And once you feel confident in your skills, then move on to actual ESMA problems. I think Khan Academy is perfectly fine. Any physics one course, like AP Physics 1, anything is going to be perfectly fine for ESMA. But first learn the concepts, okay? In terms of textbooks, you basically have two choices, right? You can either do non-calculus-based, like algebra-based, or you can do calculus-based. And I would recommend doing calculus-based because the calculus is not that complicated. And if you could learn like the concepts behind calculus, it makes it so much easier to understand physics in general. Like the fact that acceleration is the derivative of velocity is an extremely important fact. And I think most people know that, like they intuitively know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, but they don't really know the formal definition of a derivative. So they, it, it's kind of hard, right? Try to learn calculus if you can. It's totally fine if you can't. In terms of algebra-based books, the ones that I would recommend are Giancoli and Sirway. Those are the two that I use. Like, I, I'm sure there's better textbooks out there, but essentially all high school and college level physics textbooks are like basically the same if they're algebra-based. So... I don't know, it doesn't really matter. If you are a cool kid and you want to do calc based, there are so many options, but the one that I use is H&R, Hertzsprung Russell, and a bunch of you guys have been recommending Morin, so those are two really good ones. My physics teacher used um, Physics for Scientists and Engineers by Surway and Giancoli, that one's also pretty good, so if you guys want to check that out, check it out. And then after you learn all the concepts, you go through like the first 10 chapters of the book, do all the problems you can. Okay, don't do all the problems, okay? That's like a horrible idea. There's no point doing the level one problems, okay? If you could do the level one problems, great, hooray, you solved the problem. Now it doesn't doesn't translate to ESMA, what the heck? Only the level three problems, like the hardest problems in the book are probably gonna be on ESMA level, right? So if you're having trouble with the concepts, then sure, do the lower level like questions, but build yourself up to the level three questions before you try out ESMA. And then once you're done learning the concepts, go ahead, do a bunch of practice exams and grind out literally every single one of them on the website and then you should be Gucci. Once you get a Yusufo, you're going to have to read more chapters of the book, but for Evma, you only need 1 through 10. Alright, Yusufo, the most troll Olympiad in the universe. Okay, I'm sorry, Yusufo, but I gotta say, like, you, you're literally a moving target. Like, how am I supposed to know what to study if literally every year it becomes, like, harder than easier than, like... I'm sorry, this is so sad. But basically on their website, they're like... Everything is basically going to come from Campbell. Then this year, 
Nothing comes from camp phone. It's great. So at this point, I think that doing practice problems is like your best bet, right? I recommend doing more short answer problems than like multiple choice problems because I, looking back on the open exam, those like problem statements were literally used to go length on a 50 point, like 50 multiple choice question test. So I think the hardest thing about the 2020 open exam was literally like time management. I barely finished, right? It, it was weird. I, I don't understand. Of course, you first had to learn the concept, so I should probably talk about that first. So like after you learn the concept, make sure you have good time management skills, like test it out on the practice exams. Even use like semifinal exams to practice for the open exam because the open exam is getting way harder. Like historically, the cutoff has never been below 20 and then this year it was 19, it's kind of crazy. But in terms of learning the concept, I think Campo is still a great way to get started, right? Like it has all the concepts you could possibly need on the open exam except the only problem with the open exam is that they literally choose the most obscure topics to test on, right? So if you're studying Campo, you have to keep track of the obscure details, like there's no way around it. Like literally one question on the test, they literally were like, what protein is responsible for like holding the like M lines of a of a muscle spindle together. And the only reason I knew the answer to that question is because I just read it in Tortora, okay? Like, it should not be that obscure. Like, I don't get, like, when am I gonna have to know that the one protein in that muscle fiber that does that is nebulous? Like, what? <laughs> but anyway, so Campo is a good place to start, but if you wanna go further, I think it's better to get a larger breadth of knowledge instead of just like grinding a single textbook. You should probably look at Tortora for anatomy and physiology. That one goes in super depth, so I went like read it really closely, but I would just skim through it basically and write down a bunch of the obscure details that seem open exam. Like don't write down like every single muscle because there are a ton of muscles in the human body, but like something like the different proteins that are responsible for muscle fiber, mu oh, what the heck, muscle fiber contraction are probably a good idea. And then another good one that a lot of people recommend is Raven's Biology for Plant Biology. I hated that book, it was so boring. Like I I'm not interested in plant biology. I think anatomy and physiology is cool, but plant bio, what the heck? But still, a lot of the problems on the test are from Raven, so I would look into that too. But once again, to reiterate, Campbell is the Bible, okay? So if you want to choose one textbook to look at, you look at Campbell and you get all the obscure facts out of it. But if you do have time and you feel like you've read through Campbell and nothing else is going to stick in your head, then move on to Tortora and Raven. There's also Albert Cell Biology. I didn't end up doing that because I feel like cell biology is not even that important, right? Like, it's mostly genetics, like genetic machinery, uh, I don't know what else, like anatomy and physiology and plant biology, and there's a little bit of phylogeny, but like the first four are the main things. Like I would focus a lot of my time on basically figuring out how things work. So that is basically just genetic machinery and anatomy and physiology and like plant hormones and that kind of stuff. Okay, USNCO is the last one on the list. Let us get through this. So USNCO is probably like the Olympia that I'm least familiar with, although I was able to take it this year and I did decently well, but the only way I studied for it was I just read through ZoomDoll and I did a ton of problems. So ZoomDoll is really good because it has like the entire spectrum of like concepts, right? It basically has electrochem, it has like stoichiometry, it has everything. The only problem with it is that it doesn't really go that far in depth. So if you want more depth, a lot of people in the Discord have recommended Atkins, which I, I'm pretty sure is a really good book for this because a lot of people recommend it. So if you guys want to choose a book to study with and you have a lot of time and you want to dedicate it to USNCO, I would recommend looking at Atkins. I've heard that it does go into a bit of too much depth for some of the derivations, so I wouldn't like worry too much about those, but like in general, Atkins is a really good book to look at. I think another thing that you have to be worried about for chem is like, they have a lot of obscure questions, right? They, they have like the run of the mill stoichiometry, they have the run of the mill electrochem, but then they throw in a bunch of the like ad hoc questions, right? They're like, what color is this random ion? And then you're like, uh, uh why would I study that again? Why, why the heck would I want to know what color like, I don't know, MN4 pluses, but these kind of obscure things come up a lot. And I was surprised though, it's actually really similar to SAT Chem. So if you want to like study for um, like USNCO, I would actually study for SAT Chem because the, the amount of obscure questions is actually pretty similar. Obviously USNCO is way harder, but like if you study for SAT Chem, you're pretty well prepared for USNCO. All right, that's basically all I had to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Like. I personally did not know exactly what to start off doing when I was starting off with all these Olympians. I basically just did what everyone else was doing basically. And it worked out decently well. But here are just a couple of things that I learned over the years and a couple of you guys have suggested them. So I just wanted to let everybody know. Alrighty, as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again. See you guys next time.